the Term Chair of Communication at Palm Beach County University in West Palm Beach, Florida. And let's do it with our introductions. Our first guest credits include the Royals, Superman's grandmother, Miss Odette's in Krypton, and Antoine Fuqua's infant, as Kate Payne, Wallace Day! writer, producer, and director, our next guest appeared in The Leftovers, Sharp Objects, and NCIS. As Mouse, Sam Littlefield! <laughs> our next guest appeared in Luke Cage, The Sun is also a star, and Grab My Hand, A Letter to My Dad. As Luke Fox and Batwing, Cameras Johnson! Oh, anything about uh, all I know. Head bombs. Badly. Like. I'm just going to throw it over here to Wallace, Kay Kane. Uh, but yeah, that's sort of how I saw, I saw Alex. Yeah, I think it was... Uh, <laughs> 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 Where do I go? Um, yeah, I, same. I think it, it was really hard uh, for Kate this season, obviously, um, with this uh, storyline. Um, and I wanted to kind of get that balance right between, you know, her being a hero but having that villain inside her. Um, so yeah, I think it's all about balance. I think that, I mean, all the characters just have really rich histories and backgrounds to draw from, and I feel like that was really the guiding light to what we wanted and where we wanted to go in the story. Um, I feel like Mouse and Rachel just wanted something to belong to and wanted to um, find a home in their own right. And I feel like this character kind of has that in some way. Contrast between the two characters. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
including her agency, sort of come from her circumstances too. And she's just always looking for Kate Kane's love. And I just think that she is looking for that in, in everyone. I think she's just trying to find family. And that really motivates her in her own way. But I think the cool part about this story of this show is that the lines get blurred, that we set off on such opposite ends, but by the end, you know, it's a little bit confusing for these characters to question their own morality when, I don't know, Alice confronts Mary and, and sort of is like, well, are you really better than me? And, and Mary's like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> no, I say no. Ah! And she throws me across the room. <laughs> yeah. So I think for Liz, I mean, obviously Luke is supposed to be what it takes to save Gotham City. I think being a hero in any way, shape, or form means a lot to him. But what I liked in season one and two is that we saw that there's a lot more there. There's a dark part of him. I mean, season one, uh, there was the nearly killing the guy that he thought killed his dad. And in season two, after he got shot, there was that moment in poker room where he saw that he can be a little reckless. So what I like about him is that he is proof that even heroes make mistakes, even heroes have some form of, you know, revenge that they want, some form of anger in them, some form of danger in them. So I hope in season three at some point we can sort of play with that again. Because I like seeing both sides of him, like the very, very obviously good part, and also the parts like that's like, ooh, don't get too close. Keep in mind, she has the exact same training as Kate Kane. You know, they both went to Point Rock. So, um, even though in season two, you know, she walks into a room and gets like, like knocked out in five seconds, the girl is actually pretty well trained as well. Um, but I think Sophie, you know, she's actually, um, she's really like a hero to herself because the, the thing that I always just love about her is she, in season one, was a closeted black woman in law enforcement. And that's huge. And the fact that there was a moment for her to come out, which not only really represents herself, loud. but also like so many other women just, you know, in the real world, I think that in of itself is why she's a pretty dope hero. Hey. Also, before we start, can I just say it's so nice to be at a live drag and kind of thank you guys for Start over and, and we, we can't hear you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, this is a little bit more for Rachel, but what are some of the challenges of playing Alice who has such complex motivations and traumas making up their character? Well, first of all, it takes a lot of energy. I, I think I've said this a couple of people today. I drink a lot of Coca Cola. Um, and we film a lot of nights, so. <laughs> a lot of Coca Cola. Uh, but I think you know, it's one of the beautiful things about being an actor that it's, it's really about the human experience. So love, pain, disappointment, um, overcoming adversity, those things we've all faced them, uh, maybe not to the same degree, but you can draw on those experiences at times where you know, you've been really hurt and you've had trauma, I've had loss, things like that. Um, and I try to remember those things and recall those things. But but for me, really and truly, a lot of it is just when I would read the scripts, especially in the first season, and, and see all of those things and happening to Alice, um, I, didn't, I didn't really need to pretend anything. I, a lot of the emotion that I felt was real. I was really being tied up and really being dragged across the line and Sam can attest to this. It's like, it, it got yes. dark. <laughs> Uh, so I guess, you know, I hope that I, I did all of those things justice, um, but yeah, I, I was lucky that Sam was there for a lot of it, truly, because it, some, some of the days that <laughs> we were getting really dark, um, but I will say, when you cry all day on set, it's extremely cathartic. I would go home and I'd be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like weeping for 18 hours straight. <laughs> 
Uh, I would recommend it. I think we all need to get some stuff out. <laughs>
question is for Rachel. My question is, how is it compared to scale of your role as Alice from Bremen as opposed to your role as Daniel Lance from Birds of Prey? Well, um, there's a lot of similarities because they were both DC, Warner Brothers, of course, Birds of Prey was on the WB, um, and brought in CW, but they're essentially the same network. But they were so, like, such different experiences for me, one, because when I did Birds of Prey, so when I did that one, I was double my age. Um, <laughs> that was a really different experience. But they were also just such different characters. Um, you know, Dinah was very much like I was. She was new in the big city, uh, starry eyes, totally in over her head. And um, Alice is Alice. So <laughs> there's that. Uh, so, you know, in a lot of ways, I said it was like a homecoming because even the head of the studio, Peter Roth, who now is no more the head of the studio, but he was there when I did Birds of Prey. So it was, you know, it was really like coming home, but also, you know, much like, I guess, when you go home and there are things that are the same and things that are completely different. I think I like Alice better, if I have to choose. That wasn't the question, and I shouldn't have said that, but. <laughs> By Thor's hammer, <laughs> would not survive. Or like having it. Yeah. yeah. Your character's yeah. definitely would have moved. Yeah. 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 Ye
<laughs> they let me in, you got those. <laughs> um, and then the, and the, the, the best part of it is, is this like group main Kate Kane family and this like sisterhood um, to, to be involved in uh, the kind of like emotion, emotional turmoil that goes along with that was really, really exciting. And then kind of, uh, I thought it was a really cool character to be an influencer by day and a doctor by night. I think it sort of like flips that on its head and um, I just love that. My audition was like all of these cryptic words and I just had no idea what it was. It was like finger painting with words in my audition. I kind of came on set and I kind of had no idea what we were doing. And slowly over time, I fell in love with the. I, I know. I mean, we were we were gifted. Like, Tell us you know, story about your first day on set. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's good. That's good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Imagine. Um. So I, they, so I, I get the part, and they fly me up to Vancouver, and I do like seven hair tests and seven makeup tests, and I sit in the hair chair for like seven hours, and then I. Fly back to LA, I go to, to Chicago where they're doing pickups, and we our call time was like noon. And we get called to set at 1 a.m. <laughs> and we don't start filming until 4.30 a.m. Oh, really? You can't hear me? No one's ever, that's never been a problem ever in my life. <laughs> The loudest voice. Um, okay, so yeah, we start filming the scene at 4.30 a.m. We do Rachel's coverage. And I still don't know what the scene is about. I don't know what, like, like I, don't, I don't know what anything. I didn't even know what show it was. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the kicker is, is that this scene is so emotional and Sam's performance is like, <sighs> but the reality of him just having to be like, no, no, no. For, for reference, it's when we're outside of Wing Tower and Sam, or Moss is sitting there, and he wants to basically blow it up, and Alice comes, and she says, hey. She gives me the teddy bear, and... Yeah, just for reference. So, we, we do Rachel's coverage, and then all of a sudden, they, they decide they need to film a different scene. Yes, it was my scene. It was Megan's fault. <laughs> so, I was on a different so, then they, so then they get to my coverage at 6.30 a.m and the sun is rising, they are shutting down the second unit, so there's two film crews going on at the same time. It's literally like in the background, there's trucks back and it's like <laughs> Walking talkies are going on. Like, on a walkie being like, yo, uh, Bob, can you get that one? Uh, what the best thing is that? Yo, Bob, can you also get that one? <laughs> People are like walking to work. There's uh, the street cleaning uh, uh, truck. <laughs> I cannot hear Rachel at all. <laughs> and the director's just being like, all right, you want to kill yourself. You want to kill yourself. And I'm like, I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> so I got one take. And then we, we got in the van, and I was like, what the hell am I on right now? on your second take, they turned off the light. Oh, right. Sam in the middle of the take. The director walks in, he's like, this, that's a cut. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, and Sam had just joined us, and we were like, oh God, he just going to help us. Like, welcome to our show. But over time, I really feel like the writers just gave it. I mean, I just, there's so many yeah. just like beautiful scenes that Rachel and I got to do together, and I it was such a uh, the gift came later. I guess I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and for me, obviously, it was such it was such an iconic role, and I was really honoured to kind of even have the opportunity and the interest. But also, like cameras, I really want to thank the fans because, well, I think it's probably safe to say that I probably wouldn't have this if it wasn't for the fans. So, yeah. This is real because you crushed it, also. Come on, bro. You also killed it, bro. Not out. Agree? So, no, come on. <laughs> so, how much do Rachel and Wallace? actually look like twins. Oh it's yeah. Wild. In real life, I love when people say that to me. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. I look like Wallace Day. <laughs> I'm like, I play their sister. <laughs>
in person we do look a lot more like Joe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Also, what I've never really seen before is like you straight up got fan cast in the show. Like whenever, whenever we were oh, looking no. for a new UK came, like yeah, everyone was exactly. like, "What about yeah. Wallace Day?" Yeah. None of us knew you. Yeah. And I think like me and some of the writers followed you, and I was like, "Hey, yo, you're dope." Yeah. And we were like Twitter friends for like a year or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, because I went up for it like before. Yeah, way before. <laughs> <laughs> good job, man. Yeah, that's nice fun. Thank you. <laughs> Over here. My question is for all of you. Since all your characters carry some sort of trauma with them, I was wondering what you think the therapy session between the characters and Harley Quinn was like. <laughs> 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 That's a great question. Woo. I think I would be like, ah! And Alice, the Harley Quinn, um, I think it would be like terrible. And I feel like she would just like mess with it. Like she would be. I don't know, if you go into a therapy session, you'd be like, I have a picture. And, uh, and, sh and she would just terrorize Mary. <laughs> Is that what the question was? Like, therapy <laughs> session? <laughs> <laughs> like, everybody's talking, looking at me. Give me the eyes. No, no, no. Was I, was the question. I was going to say, I'm now that the Halloween is also a therapist. Oh. Like, ah. um, <laughs> I was like, what's happening? <laughs> I mean, not, uh, therapy with Madison and Harley Quinn sounds horrible. It sounds like uh, absolutely terrible. That's all I have. Yeah. I was just going to say, to be completely honest, I think with Kate and Harley, it would probably just end up hot and steamy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. <laughs> and then you'll be asking Sophie if she'll be the third. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, baby, it's a party. <laughs> I think it would be some kind of crazy little loop. You know how like Robin turns into a red hood? I think it would be like a like a blue hood situation. I think she probably pulled the crazy out of loop. Cause like I think in the show you see that he he's so good, he turns evil for a quick second and then he takes over again. She could just pull that evil out of him, that'd be half. Hi, my name is Jessica. I'm from um, so I want to first say thank you guys for bringing me back family at, because it is a family. You guys are fantastic. Two our CD screens every week, so thank you for that. Thank you. Um, but my my big question is for everybody to answer. Uh, so DCTV and Greg Berlanti is great about meta casting in the TV shows. Uh, you know, Supergirl's adoptive family are uh, Clark from Lois and Clark and the original Supergirl. Who would be your favorite? Cameo past appearance from DCTV, and Cam might be better at answering this. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, Cam, you can have an answer for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tyler. Oh, yeah. Ooh, shit. Shit, shit, shit. Malfunction. Malfunction. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that would have been awesome. Something with Superman. He's like, he, well, we were FaceTiming with him on set the other night. We should have just brought him in. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. That would be yeah. really confusing for me. Hold up, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> that would be really confusing for me. Hold up, hold up. <laughs> Am I a grandma? No. Yeah. Am I gay? Identity crisis. <laughs> I did actually have dinner with Tyler the other night, and we were like, is this a family dinner or what? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> I would love for Guardian to come over. Uh, Ozzy testifies like my sister, so anything for her to do with that one would be dope. I'd love John Gilbert to come over too. Uh, every black superhero in the world, so I'd like to come over. So everyone in Black Lightning? Black Lightning, anybody? Black Lightning? <laughs> If they're available. Uh. <laughs> I've always really dreamed, and I think there's one fan, I can't remember the name, Nicholas, but any chance they get, they're always like, so what do you think about teaming up with the Black Lightning cast? And I think about it often, because if there was some way to get every Black Arrowverse character together in like one episode, remember that one crossover? Uh, was it Diggle and there were two Black actors that gave each other the nod? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. I saw that and was like, I wish I was in the room when that happened. Because that's so cool. Because they didn't say anything. They just looked at each other and were like, I see you. <laughs> Black Superman. Yeah. yeah. I wish I was in the room. Hey, y'all. Hi. What's up? Russ Ball, like I said, I love the show. I watch every time I want to go back and watch uh, season two. I love how everybody's character was developed. I'd also like to welcome you all to Atlanta. Welcome to the program. Thank you for your first time.
hope you enjoyed our fair seating on the city. And um, my question is basically for Megan. So during the last couple of episodes, um, this kind of theme season, when you were planning to come, come out of the pros, but it seemed like the, the, the team wasn't really taking seriously, like they were pointing to some orders and leaving out of, you know, leaving out of meetings. I was wondering if any of that ever felt, uh, there was a personal team. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, I think the, the, the interesting thing with season two is we were really trying to of course, there's the creative aspect of all of this, right? Like, it's all make believe. But they were also bringing in a lot of, like, very real elements that happened to black women in power. Um, black women were asked to step up and how you, know, you have a whole room of white men that don't want to listen. Um, I remember speaking to Ebony, who's one of our writers on the show, and that was a dynamic that they wanted to put into the show. And, and those particular scenes, especially filming with Jesse, who was, he played Tavaroff, and he was just playing, like, the best sleazy jerk ever. I, I wanted to smack him every single take. But the way he was doing it, I mean, that's, you know, how it is sometimes, you know? Like, you don't always get the respect, and, you know, sadly, it's not always based upon, you know, uh, you know any, it's, it's not based upon your resume. Sometimes they're just looking at you, and it's just based on your color. It's like, huh, I don't have respect for a black woman or a woman in general. And so, um, playing that, yeah, I mean, honestly, there was a scene I can't remember which one. Actually, it was the prison episode where um, I don't know where Jacob Kane was. And so I had to go back. I was acting commander. And even just doing that scene, you guys, I remember like literally feeling like I felt I was so mad because Rob Duncan, who was the director of that episode, he would always come in and talk like, you guys, just give her looks like she's she needs nothing. Like, just when she's talking to you, look this way. And he was feeling a little too real. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm not even acting right now. F all of you guys. <laughs> but it, it was good because it, it kept me in it. But, um, but yeah, it, it was interesting to play all that up. But it was also very real. Thank you for the question. Hi. So uh, first, I just want to say I love how everything with the show handled the change in from season one to season two, but I'm really curious how y'all actually all approach that. Because um, obviously that had to be a major plot change from where they thought the show was going to go. Um, with the with Ruby Rose leaving and Wallace Day joining, who I think did perfect. But uh, so how did y'all how did y'all approach that? Yeah, I think when it initially happens, you know, because. We were all supporting characters to Kay Kane. So Kay Kane was the son of our show's universe. We were all planets orbiting around her, you know? And especially for me, I thought, he's Alice, he was like, am I gonna be fired? <laughs> <You know? laughs> because so I spent the entire first season saying all I cared about was Kay Kane, and I killed my best friend. <laughs> um, so I was really happy when they brought Wally in and we got to explore that more. Uh, but it was also, you know, an opportunity to pivot and do something very different. And then for me specifically, we had talked so much about Sophia, and so her coming in, there was continuity there for me. And I got Nathan, who played Ocean. Yes. So lovely to look at and <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, this is my boyfriend? Okay. <laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> so, so, yeah, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say in terms of Mary, I actually found that um, I was working a lot more at the beginning because I was like, oh, wow, we get to meet somebody who's completely outside uh, the world. We had just establish and then kind of really get to explore like what it's like from the outside coming in and all of that and there was just like more for us to deal with i feel like and that's always fun as um for uh for a group of actors or for at least for me that it just definitely doesn't feel stale in any way it's always something new uh that you're dealing with and definitely like i second what rachel had said about the Kate Kane character uh, herself, but I but I think she was the character, the comic book character of Kate Kane was still very much with us and is in our uh, uh, 
story and um, I think that's the special thing about these shows is that we really honor the comics and then take off and it becomes something that is truly unique to this group at this table and our iteration of the show. And I'll say that um, I mean, the greatest thing of Ruby Rose leaving is it actually created an awesome opportunity for us to have a black fat woman. And that's definitely something that I've never seen before. Yeah. And so having um, a Judicia play that role just on a personal level, and a personal level is absolutely awesome, especially being a black woman. Yeah. Um, as it pertains to Sophie, um, the thing that I think is actually really cool, um, although we did, there were some elements where like, you know, I think some characters were commenting on Ryan's hair or, or whatever. Like, I feel like, because it, it should be normal, right? You know, a, a lesbian superhero should be normal. A black superhero should be normal. And I, and I love the fact that like on the show, no one really made it like a big deal. So like for Sophie, she wasn't just like, oh, uh, that woman, you're black now. Like it, it just, it was just a thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. um, but then even so, like, I mean, it, it was hard for Sophie too, because I mean, the love of her life is right over there. So when it goes to Kate Kane, yeah, it was an issue in that sense, but it also created an opportunity for something new to come about. Yeah, I'm gonna do two shout outs too. One shout out to Javicia, because she made it so easy to transition. She came in with like high energy, she was fun, she was funny, but she made it a good time. So moving from one back into the other was like nothing. She, because she came in with this humility. Like I know that I wasn't here the past year, I don't know what happened, but I'm here now. I want to step up, tell me what to do. And once we're all comfortable, I'll be the new superhero and that's exactly what happened. Shout out number two, our writer. How many times have you seen a show where the lead is no longer in the show? So like, it's an impossible task to make sure that all the other characters still have something interesting for, to make you want to come to DragonCon and come talk to us still. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that they had 18 episodes and they found a way to construct this story that was strong enough to give us a third season is a big deal. I wish the writers were here so we could all tell them how much we love them and how impressed we are with their work. So shout out to both of them because with our team is the reason that we could keep moving forward with them that one. I'm going to ask the next question. Okay. Another thing that that woman deals with, and all your characters have this duality. Everybody has this dual nature, whether it's something they're hiding, whether it's the good side or the evil side. So this is an all state question. Like, like uh, what are the things that we're hiding? Okay. Me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, reverse, like, oh, let's give us a chance to think, Rachel. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Can we come back? <laughs> Um, I guess Alice, you know, really oscillates between good and evil. Um, and I used to think about this a lot when the first season had Beth not been put in the situation that she was in. Would, would she have been evil? I don't think so. And, and it, you know, really begs the question a lot of um, people today, you know, people that we don't give second chances to in this society. Uh, Maybe we don't spend enough time looking at where they came from, what they went through, things like that. And I'm, I'm not saying that as a blanket statement or anything, but, um, you know, I, I really always believed that Alice could be redeemed. And that's how I approached her. Uh, she didn't always make the right decision, but I always believed that she could be. Although I do like her evil, so hopefully she stays that way. <laughs> I mean, I, I, every time Alice killed someone, uh, I always sort of saw that he kind of felt like he was playing a video game. It didn't even seem necessarily real to him. Um, I think that uh, it's hard for me to think about it in terms of like duality because I just see uh, just so much trauma that is uh, unhealed and unrecognized. And so, to me, it seems like it's somebody who's just sort of fledglingly trying to make their way through the world and find, you know, some kind of peace somewhere. So I guess, I don't know, I guess that's like, what the thing for can't break me. What you really got me for? What man can't kill you for? Um, I mean, for me, it's a bit easier to define because <laughs> Because yeah, I mean, it literally was two people uh, for this season. 
<laughs> for philosophy. <laughs> um, so yeah, having the Cersei uh, like persona come through and live within Kate, um, it was just so exciting to play. It felt like I was playing Jack and Hyde, which is obviously probably like an actor's dream in many ways, because you have so many different attributes and traits to a character. Um, so yeah. So, I mean, with, with Sophie in season one, you know, she was closeted. Um, and I, I think for her, I mean, she's living a double life. You know, she herself was like, you know what, I'm straight. You know, here's my, my husband, and here's my thing. I'm going to do this. And then Kate Kane comes back into Gotham, and then all of these feelings start to come back up for her. And so um, that was actually a great thing that Kate came back, because had it not been for that, I don't know if Sophie would have um, come out of her shell, but having to live a lie, but also you know, hiding truth, you know, I think having to do that was really, really, um, it's tough for someone like Sophie. But then also, too, like, when I think of season two, you know, she very, very much was, like, representing the crows, like, you know, through and through. She really, really believed in them. And it really was not until, really, like, Ryan's character, like, calling out all of, like, the issues that were going on with the crows. And so, but Sophie wasn't seeing that. So she's, like, living this, like, She's living in this world of like, all right, cool, law enforcement, I got this for crows, Jacob Kane got this, and not even realizing that she's also representing like ignorance. So in a way, I felt like that was kind of like a, a two-faced kind of thing, but she, she was not two-faced herself, but it's just two different parallels that she was playing. Uh, for Mary, I think it's sort of, uh, in terms of duality, I think that's interesting. I think it's building, I will say that. And I think, uh, like a lot of the characters at this table, she's undergone her own sort of trauma. Uh, thank you, Alex, for killing my mom. Uh, to really just start her off on the right path to growing up. I got my mom's head in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> True, yeah. Um, and then Jacob leaving and and all of the things like that, and continuing to try and get people's love and acceptance, and and being ignored, being left out, and stuff like that. And what I'm interested in is uh, kind of she's so sure, you know, right now that Alice is evil, right? But then she starts to have these questions like, oh, well, why aren't I comfortable with? letting her to die or things like that. Um, and her humanity comes into play. But I do think that all of this trauma, all of this loss is a great origin story for her to figure out what her voice is gonna be and how she's gonna take her power back, whether it's for good or for evil. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Leave me alone, Rachel. You continue. <laughs> Over here. Uh, good afternoon. This question is for all of you. With your characters on the show, and some of you probably can already answer this, but if your character was exposed to the Scarecrow's fear toxin, what do you think your character's worst fear would be? Ooh. Well, Mouse and I were. Yeah. Yeah. The, you watched the show. Get <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this is a problem, right? <laughs> 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 no, but I don't know if it was clear that that was Scarecrow's fear toxin. But that's what it was, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. that was. Yeah. 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 So not good. I guess just take us out of the out of the question. <laughs> yeah. Everyone knows the answer. Yeah. Um, Mary, okay. You could we come to a field. <laughs> no. Um, Mary's just like alone and she's like calling all her friends and there's there's no one in her contacts. Maybe that's <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's more millennial. She's no more followers. I don't know. I don't know what happens to her. I think Luke should be like Gotham falling apart. It's his fault. Like I think it would be like him trying to like I, I, I imagine like every Gotham villain and just him 
and you can't find any help. And he presses a button and it's like, distract now. <laughs> Like no one's there to help him, so he's trying his best, but he's just losing, and he probably just sees everyone suffering because of it. I think he blames himself for a lot of stuff, so he puts a lot of weight on himself, like myself, or whatever the part. <laughs> so he puts a lot of like, things on his own shoulders, so I think his biggest fear would be that it's so much weight that he can't handle it. That is Cersei cutting up the bad suit. Yeah, for real. Yo, so much it's time and work yeah. in that suit. <laughs> I was just gonna say that um, I think for Sophie, it was definitely, I mean, we saw it in season two, you know, she would never ever want to be a part of a racist establishment. Um, so I think when she was being with the pros, I mean, she sincerely from the bottom of her heart, she thought that she was representing the best of, you know, law enforcement and protecting Gotham and, and being, you know, like the good one, you know? And so for all of that to just constantly be thrown in her face, like, wait, no, there's something wrong with it. Like, it was actually kind of fun to, to play with that, you know, because it's like, that was a big deal for her. She worked so hard, came from nothing, left Point Rock, and then gets this awesome job with the crows, and then all of a sudden you find out later that they are everything that you were fighting against and working against. So that was definitely her biggest fear. I think the case for this girl would be uh, to lose or feel like she hasn't protected uh, these guys. The end. Sophie especially. Yeah. But she just is on me, Sophie. Sophie especially, yeah. Power to the power! You better move That was a great question. Over here. My question is for all of you. Do you all expect to see Poison Ivy next season on the show? Who? Who's that? Y'all know. Next. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, my question is, if you guys could choose another villain from Batman's Rules Gallery, who would you like to see that one face off against? Uh, that one. I'm pretty excited about Poison Ivy. I'm pretty excited about Poison Ivy 2. I'm pretty excited about Poison Ivy 3. I'm pretty excited about Poison Ivy 4. I'm excited about Poison Ivy 5. <laughs> Okay, I also am excited about Poison Ivy, but I didn't think that we were supposed to answer Poison Ivy. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately defensive, right, John? Yeah. I think the easy answer is the Joker, because he's my favorite villain of all time, not just in DC. Because I think we tend to relate to bad guys that are bad for good purpose, right? Uh, but what's his name? Freaking the Avengers, like he wants to kill everybody, but kind of like he thinks he's over hot and blah, blah, blah. So we relate to bad guys and they have a good reason. Say again? That's right, Thanos. I didn't forget. I was That's testing you in the past. <laughs> and also, Killmonger from Black Panther. We love him because we're like, oh, you're kind of like us. So we almost want you to win. The Joker is not bad. He's just evil. And I like that. He's one of the only villains. No, 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 no. Check this out. He's one of the only villains that does bad things because he it thinks it's hilarious. And I love that. Mm -hmm. Because it's almost like there's nothing except for evil. And I love that Batman's always trying to fix it. He's always like, I'm not gonna kill him. There's something there. And the Joker's like, no, there's not. There's nothing here. Kill me. <laughs> I love it. He's my favorite. So the Joker, number one, bro. We've got about two minutes left, so I'm gonna try to get to as many questions as possible. This side. Quick fire. Lightning. Hey guys. Hey guys. I was in the house. Okay, quick fire answers. No one, love Alice. Uh, Batwoman, Brian Logan. Alice. Alice. I have another question, Alice. <laughs> Too fast. <laughs> Alice. <laughs> okay, next. Woo! Okay, so as someone who hasn't seen the show, what would you say to convince somebody to watch? I'm always you can definitely say it's because I'm hot. Look how hot they are. Uh, okay. <laughs> Wallace Day's face. Wallace Day's, the whole, Nice. What are you doing later? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I personally would say for the chemistry between the characters. I think that one's black now, and also at the end of season two, a bunch of really cool toys got out. Uh oh. <laughs> Everyone else has answered my answer. <laughs> Over here. Um. What was it, when did you find out that uh, Luke would be suiting up as Batwing and what was that like to, to wear the suit and 
all that awesome finale stuff. Appreciate that. Uh, I knew day one. I, as soon as we got to Vancouver, sat down from the table reading, we did the read, everyone started to leave, and I pulled the showrunner to the side and was like, hey, yo, so, uh, bad way to go? And she said yes. So I've known since day one. I pretended not to on Twitter for the past two years, and I apologize. <laughs> so sorry. Liar! Because y'all, yo, straight up, y'all ask me. acting, right? Y'all ask me every other day. That way, and I was like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. So I know since the beginning. The suit is really dope. It is very heavy. It's very tight at the same time. But every time I put it on, I feel like I have super strength. So if you see me picking things up when I'm wearing it, because I feel a lot stronger. It takes two to three people to put it on, though. It's layers on layers on layers, but I love it. Over here. Someone, sorry, real quick. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> every time there's a good answer, he goes, <laughs> it makes me really happy. <laughs> my question, my question is for Sam. Oh. Okay, now, everybody, I mean, are you, are you, are you able to do all those voices you do on the show? Is that modulated or? or oh, it's modulated. Yeah, it's, it's all in the ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah.
me and cameras just tried to get through it and not laugh because it was it we had to exert so much energy and we were slipping around on this fake glass and like actually falling and um it's it's one of the funniest physical comedy is like really i one of like probably my favorite thing to do with that did you fall no. yeah she fell no. so so then, so then we're like when the, when the warrior broke the glass and like the, the table and shattered everywhere. So fake glass is actually so incredibly slippery. And they had to clean it, like we, had, we only had so much time so we couldn't get, get out of the way. So we were basically acting on like an ice rink. So whenever you see like moments, we were like, we gotta go! Like that's because like, we were about to fall over. And I think at one point, she did. <laughs> then I got up like this. <laughs> You know? <laughs> <laughs> and real quick, my favorite scene was whenever I approached Reggie, the guy that I thought killed my dad, because it was like a very like hard, I just love crying scenes, I think three of the favorite scenes have probably been crying scenes. What I really loved is that it started raining, and I was like crying in the rain scene, are you kidding? Oh, and then Nick, Nickelback started playing. <laughs> Nickelback was playing in the background. <laughs> As the cover just pan. <laughs> And then my favorite scene, I can't remember the episode number, it's when you always were kissing, I know. <laughs> <laughs> kissing. Mm -hmm. um, but no, it's, it was the prison episode where there's an opportunity for Sophie to defend herself as a black woman in law enforcement, which just so happens to be something that I also stood for. And so representing that on the show and actually being able to be like, hey, look, I'm not racist. I'm actually trying to make a difference in the, in the establishment. It was really, really cool to do that scene. It was a really, really long, mile long. And um, <laughs> Isia and Cam were just so supportive, like, when I was having to do it. And, like, even, like, your comments afterwards about it, like, it made me feel really good because that stuff was really rough. That was a day. So, yeah, that was my day. She crushed it, too. Woo, you go, you will go to. No. Sadly, we are out of time. Please join me in thanking our guests. Oh, my God. 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 We yeah. have one more question. Jeez. One more question. You can't oh. leave. Oh. No, yeah, go oh, ask it. Go, 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 go. It's like a rare opportunity to get an all this here. Please? This is okay. Please take off. Oh. Awkward? Awkward. <laughs> oh, no, you think it's only... In the red, behind you. Yeah. In the red, the guy in the red. Right, right there. He wants to ask. He's behind you. Oh, sorry, that's right. <laughs> better ask him. That's right, that's right. He's like, come back. He's like, let the rest of the room. He's like, can I ask my question? <laughs> Um, right now I'm a little confused. Um, oh. Oh. Oh, you were right. right. He didn't have a question. Oh, he didn't have a question. Oh, he wasn't about the bathroom. Oh, guys, yeah. thank you so much. Wow, we love you. Thank, thank you guys. Um, come say hi. Come say hi. Oh my God, the Vizca. It's a good thing. Nicole Pan, Cameras Trust, and Sam Littlefield, and Wallace so Gay. Thanks, uh, <laughs>